Hey everyone, welcome back to another live stream. We are live right now after the market has closed. We're gonna have a look at how red, how green some of these stocks were. We're gonna go over the announcements that were made today with regards to X. And then of course you can ask whatever you want throughout this live stream. We're gonna have a look at some companies if you want. Tomorrow's video is gonna be a good one. Today's video was about Palantir. If you missed that, go watch that. And especially yesterday's video, it's about Paycom. Some of you have asked about that stock in previous live stream. Good company. Stock has fallen hard for a specific reason. I suggest you go and watch that video. Now, first up, first thing I want to show you is this right here. So all the announcements that were made today on X, which were, by the way, a pretty big deal for a platform that is supposedly dying. So. Three new X shows has been announced. One is from Don Lemon, previously from CNN. Another is from Tulsi Gabbard and the term from Jim Rome. Never heard before, but apparently a show about sports or something like that. X has teamed with Shopify, enabling Shopify merchants to reach even more customers by leveraging the power of X. This will make it seamless to upload product catalogs into X and help merchants optimize their ad dollars to maximize their outcomes on X. Again, I've had a conversation today with a couple of people with regards to X being a platform that you can do a lot of things on that. To be honest, I mean, how many people are actually using X solely to create stuff? How many are in there just to scroll and see whatever is happening? And how many are actually going to X for shopping purposes? Probably not that much. X has paid out a revenue share money to over 80,000 users thus far, and Musk says this will increase significantly in 2024. I am forever grateful to get my $24, $30 each month. Really amazing. I can't complain, can't complain. Previously, I was on X, earned $0. Now I earn $24, $30, not that much, but I don't complain, pays for the coffee, so that's okay. Then apparently X peer-to-peer -peer payments will go live later this year. Again, people are talking about this as if it would be the end of PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, stuff like that. How many people do you personally know on X? Me personally, not that many, maybe a handful, maybe a handful. And this handful, I'm not going to use X to send money through that platform. I have other apps I use to send money, I have Revolut, United States, you have Cash App, you have Venmo. But again, nice addition to the platform. Nice addition to the platform. Um, last thing here, effective February 1st, 2024, X will expand access to their vetted ad inventory pilot program with integral ad science to all US advertisers. In this partnership, IIS classifies all vertical video ads, edges, okay, blah, blah, blah. Advertising for vertical videos, stuff like that, more control, they should definitely um, partner up with the trade desk. That's just my opinion. Um, again, hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream. If you can hear me correctly, let me know in the chat. If you have questions, let me know as well. Now, the markets. As you can see, can you see this? Yes, you can. Now you can. Let's zoom in a bit. Hi, Bruno, how are you? I hope you had a, a good day or I don't know, wherever, wherever you are right now. Um, so the Dow Jones finished in red 0.42%, S&P 500 0.15%, NASDAQ basically flat. Now, if we go and look at the portfolio, this again, not all the companies here are companies that I hold. This is mostly a, a watch list. So. The biggest gainers today in that list, Shopify up 3%, AMD up, Nvidia up another 1.68%. That's a pretty strong performance. Amazon, Google, Pinterest, Square, New Holdings, Microsoft, and Roblox, all green today. And then all the red, well, it's basically the rest of that list here. The biggest losers today is Unity, down close to 8%. Lemonade down 5%. Again, Lemonade, I said before, this is a stock that you can trade and make a lot of money on. Goes up 10% one day, down 5% the other. Rinse, repeat. Coinbase down 4.64%. 
HIMS down another 3.18%. This stock was around 9.5%, $9.5, I think a week or so ago. Then you have Fiverr, Roku, SoFi, Tesla, all having a bad day today. Disney back under $90. We have a couple of questions. Let me pull this up. So, hello from Chile. Hola, como estas? Alexander. Question here from Martini. Nobody mentions Revolut because it's private, but I think it has to be one of the best, the best fintech companies to ever do it. It's definitely, yeah, it's yeah, it's private, so that's one thing. Second of all, I think it's big in Europe, not that big in the United States. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely a huge, huge player that, and lots of people are not really talking about that. Um, Bruno, quite good. And yourself, I'm in Lisbon, Port oh, okay. Lisboa, Portugal. Um, I heard a lot of good things about that place. My parents love that place. Um, would definitely love to visit uh, Portugal, maybe in the summer. We'll see. Hello from Australia. Hello, down under. So good morning to you, actually. Good morning to you. I was actually supposed to go to Australia next week. Surprisingly enough, um, I wanted to go to Australia. I go to the US Open, the Australian Open, and watch uh, watch Rafa Nadal play, maybe for the last time in Australia. But luckily for me, I did not book my ticket because he's not playing. So maybe next year, maybe next year. But definitely Australia uh, is on the bucket list. Very, very high, actually. Um, I'll definitely let you know. I'll definitely let you know. Very big fan of Jose Mourinho. Very big fan. Um, question, what are you buying these days at overpriced market? Do you think Alibaba and Oxy are at value prices these days? Oxy, I, be Oxy, I presume the oil company. Um, Baba, what is Baba doing these days? It's, it was, it's down 1.21%. Again, Alibaba is one of those stocks that truly broken in my opinion, completely broken. It's a Chinese one. But the business itself, you cannot you cannot look at Alibaba right now. I mean, if we pull up the 10-year chart, right? The 10-year chart, the, the five-year, it's down 52%. The 10-year chart, 10 years ago, um, a bit less of 10 years ago, we're at $90. We're now at $72. The business itself has grown substantially, right? Substantially, what, 10 times, 11 times, something like that? Um, so yeah, but it's 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 a Chinese stock. But again, we've seen Chinese stocks like Pinduoduo, for example, have done quite well in the last year, up fifty-seven percent. The last five years, up four hundred and eighty-nine percent. Of course, this company is a company that has been growing quite fast. Um, definitely, probably taking market share from Alibaba as well. The company has not been attacked as much as Alibaba, but still. <laughs> Alibaba is, uh, if, if we'd like to take the risk, why not? Um, why not? With regards to Oxy, it's actually on my, uh, I'll share the tab here. It's actually this on Coifin, link in the description if you want 20% off. Um, it's on my watch list for oil companies. It's actually right here. Um, so Occidental Petroleum, Yes, is this? Um, yeah, it's it's on my it's on my watch list here. I have not looked at it um, deeply, but I mean, six point eight billion dollars in free cash flow in the last twelve months. Short interest five point seventy three percent. PE only fourteen point six times. EV two sales two point seven times. Stock is definitely down. Um, if we go and look. This is probably, I would assume, an acquisition of some sort. If we look at all the metrics here, uh, currently compared to its, uh, let's do five-year mean, it's a bit cheaper to the five-year mean. But then again, we have that period of pandemic where all prices were close to zero. Um, so yeah, I would say it's, it's as expensive as, as its mean for five years. 1.25% yield, 
look at the average price target, it sits 18.54% higher than the price we're at today. If we look at the dividend, so the dividend clearly, yeah, back in the pandemic, of course, probably because of uh, cash flow problems, they cut it. Um, but since then, I mean, February 2022, you got 13 cents, you're getting now 18 cents. So definitely growing back. Um, and I'll have to remove your comment to show you a bit better here. Let me do like this. Um, so fiscal year 2023, taking a hit. Uh, that's the expectation. Sales growth down 23%, EPS down 57%. If we look at 2024, EPS reacceleration 11% growth year over year. Sales growth 5.6%. Then again, fiscal year 2025, EPS outgrowing sales 10% growth for EPS, 2.48% growth for sales. Um, so yeah, there's definitely something something there. Um, I would still want to see the expectations for uh, free cash flow for calendar year 2024. Still, still not back on track, so still taking a hit. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on that, although cash flow operation should increase 6%. So yeah, keep an eye on that. But other than that, what's what's the other names on the watch list here? Uh, Vital Energy is on the list. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Not an oil company, but Vale from uh, mining. That's also, I think, a pretty good one to put on the watch list. So yeah, there you have it. Mourinho is from my birthday. Oh, Setu Bal. That's that's nice. That's nice. I love him. Best coach. Best coach ever. Um, other than that, what else? Do I think Stone Co. is at value? Well, we talked about Stone Co. in the fintech video. If you want to watch uh, that, go check it out on the channel for a better overview. Um, but currently, <laughs> currently you can see your Stone Co. In the last year, stock is up close to eighty percent, right? Close to eighty percent. But still, I'll have to remove your uh, your comment, Roger. But still, if you look here, bottom right, it's still growing quite fast, especially the bottom line. Not even looking at fiscal twenty twenty three, which has increased tremendously. Looking at fiscal year 2024, sales growth of just 10%, then in fiscal year 25, just 8.72%. But if you look at EPS, EPS is expected to grow 34% fiscal year 2024, year over year, then another close to 17% in fiscal year 2025. So quite good growth there. With regards to the price target right now, pretty flat, the price we're at today. With regards to the metrics, much cheaper compared to the five-year mean. We're now much, much cheaper, as you can see right here. Um, but again, this company is also becoming more profitable. So that's also why. So maybe it should, maybe it should be getting a higher multiple. Maybe. Um, we'll see. Um, as for shares outstanding, this has increased quite dramatically. Free cash flow per share has gone from negative to positive. So that's why you see also the um, the mean a bit higher before, lower right now. With regards to the expectations for calendar year 2024, with regards to free cash flow, we have no expectations, but cash flow operation is supposed to increase for another 16.66% year over year. So quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely a good, a good pick. I mean, even uh, the local, even the local is a good pick in my opinion, um, despite all the tralala around it. Um, can you take a look at, can you take a look at Air Product Partners and Vici Properties as dividend payers? Also, do you use Starlink as a threat to Verizon? Um, I will have a look at that, just a second. Just checking something. 
Um, okay, so first up, let's answer the question about uh, Starlink. Um, no, not a threat. I currently at least not a threat. Um, still a long, long way to go. Again, Starlink right now is made for people that do not have access to the traditional connections, right? Do not have great internet connections. Uh, so yeah, no. Not a not a threat. Maybe in the future, long term future, yes. But even then, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, with regards to Vici, this is one of the dividend payers that I have in my personal dividend portfolio. Uh, we can look at this. I hope you can see this right. Should be yeah, should be okay. Um, so this is this is. Uh, Vici right now. This is Vici right now. 2018, you got 16 cents. You're already getting right now 41 cents. So quite a good growth. Unfortunately, we do not have specific metrics for REITs here. Um, so price to FFO, for example. I, I, I have many people have requested this already. So I've passed the message to Coifin. We'll see when that becomes available. But all the other metrics here, I mean, you can see right now on the on the screen, the traditional metrics, P is a bit cheaper, price to sale is a bit cheaper, price to free cash flow as well, but not that cheaper. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. The expectations from analysts in the coming years uh, for fiscal year 2023, big year for them. Big year for them, although the stock uh, has not done much, basically just up 4.7%. So not much from that aspect. But then with regards to sales and EPS for the next coming fiscal years, here bottom right, growth of between three to 4% year over year. Um, but again, we want to see uh, the, the metrics price to free cash flow, um, price to FFO. So we'll see. I, right now, it's a very, very strong company. I like the concentration in Vegas. Um, uh, that's the main reason why, why I bought this. Nice dividend yield. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Second is Air Product Partners. Huh? Oops, partner. Air Product Partners, are you sure? Not Air Product and Chemicals, Justin? In the meantime, shout out from Nebraska. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the shout out. Oh, I would love, I would love to do a, a 50 state road trip in the United States. Would love it. Take a van, RV or something, and then just drive. Of course, should have Starlink. <laughs> um, can you take a look at LVMH valuation? It seems that every time news from China comes out, they take it. Yeah, <laughs> you know why? It's because uh, China is a huge market for them. China is a huge, huge market for them. Um, so I'm not surprised. Luxury markets, Chinese love their, their luxury product. Um, but still, I mean, yes, if you look at the one year performance of the stock, it's down 6%. If you look at the three years, it's up 16%, five years up 150%. But uh, yeah, we can go um, a bit deeper here. Compared to its five-year mean, EV, uh, EV to EBITDA, price to sales, price to free cash flow, price to free cash flow, that's in the last 12 months, very important to note. Um, that's the one that's more expensive right now. Forward PE, less expensive, we're now at 20.8 times compared to 27.1 times. And again, it's because of the macro environment that we're in now. So this company might take a hit. Again, extremely strong company, but still luxury products. If China's economy is not that great, it's a huge market for them, could take a hit. Maybe that's what the market is reflecting right now. Could be, could be a good opportunity as well. Uh, shares outstanding, they've been buying back their shares. Free cash flow per share has been increasing quite a lot in previous years. But of course we got that huge, huge push. 
now we might see a decrease in price for free cash flow, but still quite okay, quite okay. Um, so yeah, the average price target right now sits at $918.96, representing 23.13% upside. So yeah, short-term headwinds probably for luxury. Um, maybe we should have a look at uh, Hermes as well. Uh, HMS? No, it's Hermes. Hermes. It's uh, on the in on the Paris Stock Exchange. So Hermes also one of the strongest companies out there. I mean, I'm not even joking. It's one of the most incredible companies that you can buy. In the last five years, it's up close to 300%. In the last year, it's up 16%. Last three years, up 110%. So definitely beating out on the performance here um, with regards to LVMH. With regards to the growth rates in the coming years, 10 to 11% year-over-year growth, sales and uh, EPS. With regards to the average price target, 7% higher than where we are today. If we look at um, shares outstanding, probably this is because of some acquisitions or, or I don't really follow this company closely, so apologies for that. But overall, free cash flow per share has also increased quite a lot in the last couple of years. If we look at the metrics here, it's it's more expensive than uh, than LVMH, it's more expensive than LVMH. But if you look at the last five years, it's a bit cheaper right now, but not by much. Um, so yeah, that's Hermes and that's Helvemash for you, Martini. Um, Bruno asks here, I have Audity Tech, an AI-driven company that allow the consumers through a mobile camera to know what is better cosmetic products that fit their need. What do you think? Well, that's uh, interesting stuff, but and everything that has to do like with a mobile camera or whatever, something that Apple can definitely take over if they want to. But uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, uh, first glance, more expensive right now, <laughs> way more expensive than the previous mean. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it has been public for that long anyways. But nice growth rates. I mean, expectations, fiscal year 2023, 53% growth year over year, fiscal year 24 and 25, both of them 19%, close to 20%. Um, EPS also quite ni nice growth in, in uh, fiscal year 2024, up 30% year over year, then another 3.87%. Interesting, um, price target, not that many analysts, so not really that uh, helpful for us. Um, we don't have that much consensus numbers, so yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's like these um, these other products where you just take a picture of a of food or whatever, and they they scan it and it tells you how nutritious it is and how great or not great it should be or would be for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, might be might be worth to. To look into it because it does seem to be profitable right so let's have a look actually here yeah, gross profit gross profit <laughs> gross profit has increased each and every year gross profit margin increased as well close to 70 percent now uh, EBITDA increasing as well free cash flow increasing as well free cash flow per share so yeah definitely um Definitely something interesting here. Definitely something interesting here. Market cap, $2.53 billion, generating um, now last 12 months, close to 500 million. So yeah, interesting. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. I'll have to dive deeper into that and maybe it might feature in a, in a future video. Um, but yeah, the fact that right now, because we're probably waiting for the next earnings report, um, the stock probably run up too fast without us getting to know new numbers. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll uh, 
I'll add that to uh, to the watch list. So thanks for that, Bruno. I love to love to learn about new companies, new exciting companies. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Let's see if we've got something new here on uh, on seeking alpha. Let's see. Um, oh, error test systems reported earnings. So apparently not great since the stock is down 15%. So air testing some non-gap earnings per share of 23 cents, beating expectations by 4 cents, revenue beat by 0.54 million, and yet stock is down 15%. Um, hmm, interesting. So they, they revised full year fiscal guidance for revenue to be between 75 to $85 million and gap net income between 20% and 25% of revenue. So probably that's the issue. Um, yeah, that's the issue. Um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is getting sell the news signal um i wouldn't know isn't bitcoin up down three percent okay big deal um it's been up five percent the last couple of days yeah maybe it might revisit forty three thousand. we'll see the, to be honest there's not really much to go to uh with regards to bitcoin it goes up because more people buy it goes down because more people sell <laughs> that's it um with regards to air system i don't want to have a look at what is happening right now with the stock. So before they, they reported earnings, the stock was already cheaper than before with regards to price to earnings. Um, the trend looked good, right? Up and on the right, free cash flow generating. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess guidance wasn't great. Okay. Shares of standing have increased quite a lot, but we are now free cash flow positive, so that's good. Um, let's see. Let's see. If we look at the expectations, so a lot of growth. <laughs> the expectations right now, if now that the guidance has been revised, maybe a bit less, but still, and it's we're expecting for the next fiscal years over 50% growth year over year, right? Fiscal 24, 58%, fiscal 25, 55%, then another 52, 42% uh, year over year growth. Bottom line, same story, but closer to 30, 40% there. So definitely fast growing company. Um, so yeah, interesting. I, I actually <laughs> I actually don't even know. Um, exactly what they do but i'll tell you in in five four three two one um so air test systems provides test solutions for testing wow great name burning in and semiconductor devices in wafer level uh hmm. okay so it's in the semiconductor materials and equipment industry okay cool Bitcoin is dragging Coinbase volatility to dollar spread. Well, uh, let's be honest, Coinbase has been up quite a lot without reporting anything lately. Um, but of course, we know that when Bitcoin is up a lot, something like Coinbase um, is definitely gaining from that. But yeah, I mean, if you look at the last year, stock is up 357%. So yeah. A pullback is needed. Okay, voila, I, th I thought so. Air product and chemicals. Um, air products and chemicals. Let's have a look, shall we? So, Sock is down 11% in the last year. In the last three years, it's basically flat. I'll come back to this page in a bit. Average price target up 
fifteen percent year uh, higher than we're at today. Shares outstanding have increased quite a lot. For some reason, we are now free cash flow negative. So, yeah, <laughs> what happened? Uh, what happened here? Because previously we were free cash flow, free cash flow per share positive. So, something definitely happened. With regards to the metrics here, compared to its five-year mean, we are cheaper. We are cheaper on all metrics, but free cash flow per share. So uh, price to free cash flow. So there is definitely something going on there. You can tell me why, what, let me know. Um, since it's a dividend paying one, let's have a look at the dividend. Over the last 10 years, it had a 9.51 annualized growth. Uh, percent. So 10 years ago, you got 71 cents. You're now getting $1.75. Not too shabby. If we look at what the analysts are expecting for sales growth, fiscal year 24%, 6%, year later, 9%, year after that, close to 14% year over year. With regards to the bottom line, outgrowing the top line, so 12.5% in fiscal year 2024. 9.64% fiscal year 2025, and then reacceleration 15.74% year over year growth in 2026. So, yeah, that's that. But again, um, I don't know why uh, free cash flow per share has, has come down. So, if you can tell me why, tell me why, uh, why that has happened let me know but uh yeah interesting company provides atmospheric gases process and specialty gases equipment and related services in the americas asia europe the middle east india and internationally the company produces atmospheric gases including oxygen nitrogen and argon Process gases such as hydrogen, helium, carbon dioxide, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so industrial gases is, is the field they're playing in. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Um, high couch should be great if you can make a video on different strategies of the amount, the periods, average down and up sometimes, the number of stocks, so we can have some broad ideas. I could, I could, or, or I could just talk about that right now, um, during the video. If you, if you have any specific, um, specific question, let me know. Again, it, it, it really depends on the type of investor that you are how much money you are okay investing right now because it's money that you can afford to not touch for a long period of time because you don't want to intervene in the snowball um, process. So yeah, it depends. It depends on so many things, like even the average down it depends on the stock and depends on your position. It depends on how big that position is. Are you up or are you down? Um, so yeah, lots of lots of variables. But um, look, I started pretty small. I started pretty boring. Lots of traditional holdings: um, Johnson and Johnson, Coca Cola, mm -hmm. Pfizer, Microsoft, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, these were the, these were the companies I started with. What was it? Eight years ago. So yeah, after that, I learned. I evolved. I lost money. I made money made good calls, made bad calls, still making good and bad calls right now. Um, even though my portfolio is a bit, is much bigger, um, but the majority of it is in the top four or five holdings. So to me, it really depends on 
how big a position is, how small a position is, is that position down a lot because of the market or is it down a lot because of the business? That's also something you have to ask yourself. Because if it's down because of the business, then maybe it's not worth adding more. If it's down because of the market, then maybe yes, it's worth adding more. But when do you add more? How much? Down 10%, down 20%? Depends, again, on your position, on your long-term thesis, um, and the business you're holding. So if you have any specific questions, do let me know, because I can go on and on and on and on. Can you do an analysis on AQST? Uh, I have no clue what that is, but uh, AQST. Therapeutics. Um, hmm. Stock is, well, stock is up 205% in a year. Uh, very small, $181 million in market cap. Not growing that much, to be honest. Not growing that much. We only have price to sales to go with. 3.8 times. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like this. Gross profit margin has come down substantially. Revenue not really growing that much. Free cash flow, yes, has been better. So there is that. But overall, uh, hmm, not my cup of tea right now. If you look at what the analysts are expecting for calendar year 2024, not getting that much information, to be honest. But... Yeah, I don't know. Small companies, too small for me, in my for my liking. Uh, too small for me. And just by looking at these numbers right now, not really worth worth my while. Yes, it's great. It's up to 100% in the last year, but this is not really exciting, to be honest. Is Alibaba a buy right now? It's in the low 70-ish. It's been in the low 70-ish for quite a while, actually. So yeah, nothing has changed in my view with Alibaba. I'll repeat the same thing I said before. Um, doesn't make any sense to be trading at uh, these levels. I mean, look at this. PE 7.8 times, forward PE. EV2 sales 1.1 times. It just doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. But it's Chinese stocks. Lots of headwinds, control, CCP, competition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Is it a buy? Probably is. Probably is, but you have to <laughs> you have to be comfortable holding such a company. Um, shouldn't be surprised seeing it 10%, down 10% one day. Um, yes, please. I know we can kind of time the market. But I want ideas like strategy, not the basics, okay? Whatever the amount investing in normal situation, how much do you do a uh, starting position? Okay, so I can explain a bit more maybe on that. With regards to starting position, it's highly dependable on what type of company it is. For example, for example, let me finish my tea just for a second. For example, a let's do this. Maybe no. Yeah, do this. For example, if we look at a company like Tesla, right? If you want to buy it right now, less risky, right? Less risky. So your starting position can be bigger than maybe let's say in 2018, even start 2019. If we still look at a company like Lemonade today, just take an example of a company I own personally. Very small position, only 2% of my portfolio, rightfully so, because still early days, one, it's an extremely young company still, 
unprofitable, so still some risk of it not working out. And so starting position, as you see, only 2% of my portfolio. Whereas Tesla, of course, it has grown into that position as well, but I'm pretty comfortable owning it over 30% of the portfolio. Now, if I'm looking at something like Alphabet, for example, Alphabet last year or Netflix last year, I would have zero issues buying those companies when it was at $90 or Netflix at $180 or $90, whenever that was, would have zero issues having those companies for the short term, a rebound at 10% of the portfolio, 5% of the portfolio, because of how strong these companies already are. So it depends, again, on speculative plays or already established plays where the future returns rely less on the high risk potential, but rely more on this company continuing to generate a lot of cash, return that cash to shareholders. So that's how I basically make the distinction between risky, less risky portfolio allocation, um, allocating to these, to these companies, to these positions. Um, so yeah. What if the valuation will increase fast as the price goes up after earnings, so will you be buying when valuation is not the same? Um, so will you? So you will be buying when valuation is not the same. Again, is it going up because the business is doing very well, or is it going up because the market just feels like bullish? Also a difference, um, but increase fast as the price goes on after earnings meaning I have already bought the company or I'm still waiting to buy the company? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer both scenarios. If I already have a company in my portfolio and I'm looking to add more to that position, and like you said, there is earnings, suddenly earnings is good, company goes up 10% after earnings. Am I still comfortable buying these shares? Yes, of course, still comfortable buying these shares because earnings were good, meaning the company proved that they're doing the right thing. Market is definitely rewarding them. Will I be buying the same amount? Maybe, maybe not, depending on, on the performance of, of those results. If I do not own a position, then again, are the results as good? Yes or no? You should not open the, the same amount in that position since the stock is up more than what you would like to, but I don't think that should be the determining factor, to be honest. Maybe add a bit less, but look at the business rather than, than the stock is, is basically what, what I'm trying to say here. Um, for example, I have PayPal right now. It's in the short-term position right now. It's still very undervalued in my opinion, so why am I not adding more and more and more? Because I am comfortable with the position I have right now, until management proves that they are back on track, I do not want to add more because I'm already exposed enough. I'm already exposed enough. If it works out, great. I have my position, I have a good entry point, I'm happy. If it doesn't work out, then I'm not overexposed. I take out my money and I'm done. Goodbye, thank you very much. So that's that. Um, I, I don't know why it's so big, these comments, but let me make myself bigger as well. Oh. Um, for example, I started buying Tesla trading at 150 and I like the cost averaging and it will run to 300. Then in some scenarios, I have to do lump sum when a company is good. Um, uh, Pat, you're welcome. Um, yeah, I, again, yeah, when, of course, when the company doubles in a short period of time, then yeah, maybe, maybe it might not be the best idea to keep on pouring money into that. Unless, again, unless earnings were exceptionally well, unless there's a great announcement that would obviously increase revenue estimates, earnings estimates by 20%, 30%, something we didn't know before, then okay, then okay. Um, but if it goes up, I mean, we've we've seen that with uh, with plenty of stocks. 
pa 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 pam where is that which which talk did i talk about hmm. trying to find a, a company that has gone up a lot recently uh maybe even the the miners right i mean look at this they've gone up a lot but maybe it's not a good example but anyways when stock goes up when stock go up a lot too fast probably not the best idea to to start chasing maybe maybe it would be better to to wait for a little pullback as i always say it's uh it's better to uh to wait and add on red days than on on green days I just opened a position in Coinbase because I believe the Bitcoin ETF will be approved by the SEC. Would it be way too risky? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you look at this, I, I'm pretty sure there is already a lot priced in. This is not just because Bitcoin has gone up. Um, so yeah, you're buying now Coinbase being up last year, 357%. In the last three months, it's up 93%. And the expectations right now are still negative EPS for fiscal year 2024. Uh, Bitcoin ETF or not, of course, Coinbase will be a custodian for a lot of big players, but... Uh, <laughs> I would still sit on the sidelines. It's just, uh, that's just me. Uh, it's happening with me with Datadog and I don't want to add at these levels. Um, yeah, with Datadog, I remember last uh, earnings report, stock has gone up quite a lot. Right here, actually, poof. But they have a lot of tailwinds, right? They have lots of tailwinds, of course, not not cheap at the forward PE of uh, 70.8 times. And still much cheaper than before, but before that's because, well, it just wasn't that profitable. Um, but now you, you've got lots of tailwinds for Datadog. Of course, there's always a correct price um, to pay for, for such a company. Um, we, can, we can see um, the growth rates are are pretty good the estimates for the next coming fiscal years top line over 20 percent growth year over year bottom line huge year fiscal year 2023 so 2024 only 15 percent growth year over year but then reacceleration 26.45 percent year over year so quite good but again yeah there is a there is a correct price to pay for this um yeah, I mean, it's it's okay. It's okay to to sit on the sidelines and uh, and wait. I mean, especially if you have a position and you think the company is doing well. If it goes up more, then your existing position is worth more. If it goes down for wrong reasons, then you can add more. If it goes down for good reasons, then it's just one quarter. Let's see if it if it continues the bad way um, in in upcoming quarters. Um, that's why as the entry point should be how many percent of the total amount I decide for one stock. Yes, that could be, yeah, if you should, you should definitely decide when you, when you start a position, how big you want that position to become in your portfolio for sure. And then work your way towards that, uh, that position for sure. Um, you talk to me? No, not at all. At least we have a conversation. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, so yeah, da, da, da. So if I want to invest 5K, the entry point should be how much in Datadog? Um, uh, 
so right now, I mean, if it's if it's five k for the full position, let's say, I mean, one k is just one, not just one k is 20 percent already. If it's trading at 80, 80 bucks, um, 80, 80 bucks is already much uh, much cheaper than where we are right now, right? Um, you know, with earnings seasons coming up, right? In a month from now, you have way more information. So yeah, you can start, you can have a starter of 20% already allocated, which is $1,000. Um, if you're comfortable buying more, that's also great. But then again, if you buy more, then don't add as much on a small dip, meaning don't add as much if the stock just dips 5%, 10%, because the difference won't make, it won't make that much of a difference. Um, the more you're allocated, the bigger the dip has to be for you to add an amount of money, because you want you want that amount of money to, to have a positive effect um, on your position. So yeah, there is that. Yeah, I'm assuming we are back in time, so I can understand what to do. Yeah, no, no, I understood the I understood the question. Um, again, it also it depends but specifically for data dog. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, what I what I just said. So let's see if we've got something else here that. Um, it's interesting. Hmm. So there was a brief spike on a false report that SEC approved Bitcoin ETF again. With the whole Bitcoin thing, it's truly remarkable because it doesn't really change anything, right? Oh, the adoption. Okay, there's an ETF. Big deal. Um, you can get exposed to, to Bitcoin in many, many ways these days. So... Yeah, Sonos appoints Apple's executive salary case as CFO. Interesting. Top stocks with efficient growth in Q4, according to Bank of America. We've got here Microsoft, AMD, Meta, PepsiCo in the top four. Clacorp, Colgate. Lowe's, Qualcomm, Moody, Chipotle, finishing the top 10. Okay, interesting. I mean, solid picks for sure. Um, solid picks for sure. One of these companies is in tomorrow's video. Not going to say which one. Um, pa -pa -pa -pam. It's going to be an interesting uh, earning season. It's going to be an interesting earning season, that's for sure. Uh, going to tell us a lot about 2024. I, I believe there is a CPI report tomorrow, I think. If I remember correctly, the CPI report tomorrow, so that, <laughs> that will definitely add a bit more uh, fuel to the fire wherever we go. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, if you have... Any other questions, let me know right now. Um, looking at the dividend tracker here. Target was up, Walmart was up, Procter & Gamble up. Um, okay, all the others down between 0 to 0 0.5 to 1%. Vichy is down more, as always, not really love that much. Starbucks still represents quite a good opportunity, in my opinion, Starbucks and Pepsi. Um, 
still good picks, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, pretty interesting start of the year, that's for sure. So the portfolio, the values you're not able to see because um, there, there are some private stuff there that should stay private. But the allocations, um, how the portfolio looks is this. Um, it's the pin post on X updated every month unless nothing changes, which was the case. So 33% Tesla, 16% Amazon, 7% Melly and Meta, between four to six percent, the Trade Desk, Airbnb, Palantir, three to four uh, percent, Block, Intel, New Holdings, SoFi, two to three percent, Lemonade, Fiverr, Pinterest, currently five percent cash, and then the dividend portfolio. It's different because I'm fully allocated there, only reinvesting dividends, not adding anything. BTI, Altria, yes, tobacco company. I know a lot of people hate them. Very very high yield will be able to sustain that for a long time. So I use them as free cash flow, um, free cash flow as cash flow. Then Verizon, Deer and Company, uh, CVS and Vici to complete the dividend portfolio. That's it. On the watch list, I have Celsius um, right now for 2024. So yeah, that's about it. I'm looking uh, yeah, no, Celsius is the only big one on, on that watch list. Have you been holding traders for a while? Yes, but not not that long. So it's not a, I mean, my, my average is $58, $59 or something like that. So not, not such a wow, um, but still better than, than what we're at today, I would assume. Um, I don't even know what was it, $72, $73, what are we today? I oh, know, $69, $68. So, yeah, the trade desk, great company, great company. Great company, not cheap, was never cheap. I've explained it a couple of times. Some companies are just never cheap. Um, if you look at the the difference here, um, did it all? I mean, even when it crashed, right? It was still trading at 41.4 times for RP. Some companies are just never cheap, just like Adian, never cheap, just great management, great products, market loves it. So you get a higher valuation because the growth rates are, are there, as you can see. Uh, maybe you can't see, so I'll, I'll do this, as you can see right here. Growth rates are there, profitable, growing market. Can I share with you my way of thinking? And it should be really nice if you can share your opinion. Maybe you don't like. I'm only hoping you can get me, but not to tell him what he says. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'll wait. I'll wait uh, for. But it's gonna be a long text send and maybe you can answer me anytime later. Um, yeah, I'm not going to stay alive for, for much longer, but, uh, but yeah. If you can, uh, if you can write the text in the next couple of minutes, meaning max top five minutes, then I'll answer you during the live stream. But if it's going to take longer, then maybe write it in the, in the comment section um, later on. Uh, thoughts on Confluent? No, I haven't. We can look at it, actually. We can look at it. I have never uh, looked at, at it that much. Um,
but let's have a look. Con, it's not confluence, confluent. CFD, confluent. Okay, hmm, whoa, not cheap. <laughs> not cheap, but definitely probably growing faster than, than expected. So for those that don't know, Confluent operates a data streaming platform in the United States and internationally. The company offers Confluent Cloud and Managed Cloud native service for connecting and processing real-time uh, real data. Confluent platform and an enterprise great self-managed software that connects and processes data. Um, okay. Right now, yeah, valuation wise, not that great. Momentum, not that great. Profitability, not that great. Growth, growth is there. Um, growth is there. Some people call it the Switzerland of the cloud. Okay. Uh, yeah, shares are standing. Needs to go up. Definitely a company that is growing. Profit margins have been growing as well, so that's something it's always nice to see. Average price target sits close to thirteen percent higher than where we at today. The expectations. Uh, fiscal year 2024, positive EPS of 17 cents, sales growth of 22% year over year. And then another 25.26% year over year growth in 2025 with EPS growing 87.21%. So you're basically paying, uh, what, 80 times, something like that? 80 times 2025 <laughs> EPS, so yeah. If they can continue to grow as fast, then maybe maybe they, this high high multiple is uh, warranted. If not, then definitely not. But I've not I've not uh, digged that much into that company. But top line, it it looks it looks okay, Justin. It looks okay. Uh, we'll see. They they definitely have to continue to grow extremely fast. That's for sure. Um, that's for sure. Um, yeah. If you keep it in the comments, that, that's good. I can look at it later on. I know you've looked at synopsis, but I've been trying to look for behind the scenes semiconductor plays like that or Axelis or Cadence Design. No opinion. No opinion because I don't know anything about them, um, about the last two. No opinion. If you want, we can, uh, um, can have a quick look here. Growing double digits, expected to grow double digits. Ford PE, 46.4 times. Um, yeah, revenue has been increasing. Free cash flow has been increasing. So that's always good Good to see. Shares outstanding have been decreasing. Free cash flow per share has been increasing. So definitely great. Um, now let's compare to the five-year mean. Currently more expensive. Currently more expensive than before. Um, so yeah, that's maybe a negative point, I would say. Average price target sits at 9% higher than where we are today. Um, yeah, expensive, but good. <laughs> expensive, but good business for now, uh, for my two second overview. Expensive, but good business. Excel is technologies. Here, growth is a bit less, as you can see. Not double digits for, for fiscal year 24 and 25. Fiscal year 2023, yes. And EPS still double digits for the coming years, okay. Um, price target only seven analysts, so yeah. It's 45% higher, but seven analysts, not that much to go with. Cheaper than the five-year mean, of course, cheaper than uh, then Cadence um, growing a bit slower as well. So maybe that's why. If we look at what has been happening, revenue has been increasing. Free cash flow in the last three years has been increasing as well. Return equity goes up. Gross profit margin around the same, 42.6%. 
return on capital close to 20%, can't complain. Uh, shares outstanding have has come down a little bit since 2021, but not that much. Free cash flow per share has though increased quite a lot. Um, so yeah, again, this is also a strong company, cheaper than, than the other one. That's for sure. Cheaper than the other one. What differentiates the two? I don't know. I'll uh, I'll have to look. I'll have to look a bit uh, deeper. Um, let me just double check here. So Axelis designs, manufactures, and services ion implementation and other processing equipment used in the fabrication of semiconductor chips in the United States, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Um, Okay. And uh, Cadence. Cadence currently, yeah, the only problem with Cadence is, is definitely valuation. Here it uh, provides software, hardware, services, and reusable integrated circuits, IC, designs blocks worldwide. The company offers functional verification services, including emulation and prototyping hardware. Okay, so a bit different. Uh, a bit different, yeah. But here, yeah, growth, pro profitability, that's all great. Valuation is the problem with Cadence. So think about that. All right. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, so yeah, if there aren't any other questions, we'll leave it at that. One hour live stream, I think is, is good enough. We covered a couple of companies. Um, that you wanted to see. So, yeah. Thank you all for joining. Um, I think most people uh, enjoy the live streams after the market closes, right? Um, the Magnificent 7 of 2023 will become the Lag 7 of 2024. Um, not all. Not all, no. I don't, I don't think... I think Amazon will do very well this year. I think NVIDIA could still do okay. Um, this year certainly started the year quite strong, but uh, Tesla could also outperform if if they do things correctly. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Lol at the mode tech bio today. Mode tech fashion. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but. Uh, Never mind. Um, I think the Magnificent Seven, there are still some companies that will do quite well this year. Can other sectors outperform? For sure. I think fintech can outperform. I think healthcare can outperform as well. A video about healthcare, pharma videos, uh, video stock will be, will be coming out maybe later this week, starting next week. Um, 2024 will be the year of small mixed biotechs. Uh, I, I, I can agree that bio, biotech, pharma, uh, healthcare, the healthcare sector, you can include biotech as well. I think, yeah, will will be that year. Definitely, that's what most most of the funds are expecting, especially after a a lagging, a horrible 2023. So, yeah, I would agree with that. With that, thank you all for joining. Um, so, yeah, definitely, I think after hours, you like it more, maybe even just before the market closes, so we can do that together. Um, so, yeah, Google yeah, Alphabet if. If Alphabet, uh, if we see a reacceleration in growth for cloud, then yes, I think Alphabet could be a good tank candidate as well, for sure. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. A lot of things can happen in 2024. A lot of things can happen. Selection year, Fed will do what the Fed will do. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, thank you for joining. 
probably tomorrow after the market closes or just before the market closes, we'll do another live stream. Um, it's also a bit better for me than just before the market opens. So see you all next time. Thank you very much for joining. Bye-bye.